Now the first thing we did with the Sandy 60 was we pulled that old bus apart. The guys at ATF did their best to clean it out, including that horrible swamp water, which just really concerned me. So we've already decided not to keep this period correct in its styling. While we'd like to bring it up to date, we'd still like to keep some of its old school charm. So let's go over what we've done with the Sandy 60's interior and electrical system. Now I've driven a few old Forbys and I've got to say, they really make you smile. But there's something else that also happens. The fatigue from driving an old vehicle is just incredible. One of the best things I did with our 79 series farm truck was to replace the seating with aftermarket seats. So we contacted the guys at Stratos to try and find a seat that was both ergonomic and economical. The dual battery system up front are a couple of the new Century Dual Force batteries. Now these work extremely well as cranking and auxiliary batteries. One of the best features of these Dual Force batteries is that they are able to operate in temperatures above 50 degrees. For the Chev V8 to take it to the next level, we've actually custom rebuilt the wiring loom. The battery management system in this vehicle is a Red Arc Battery Manager 30. Now the Battery Manager 30 gives us 30 amps of input. We can take power from 240 from the mains, a solar off the roof, in this case we've got 250 watt solar panels, and we also get 12 volt charge from the alternator up front. There's a display which is mounted on the back of the drawers, which provides us all the information of where our charge is coming from and how much power we've got left. Another item we've added up front is the Couplatech rust prevention system. The one we've chosen is a six pad system, which hopefully will stop any of the hard work of rust repair from coming undone. In replacing the hood lining, we got it onto Tyson from ProStitch. He does a whole stack of work for ATF with all the cuts that they do on their 200 series vehicles. And we come up with a number of ideas on making things a whole lot better. He was super excited about being involved and he ended up helping with all sorts of things. So from the driver's perspective, in front of you, you'll see a beautifully designed 79 series wrapped steering wheel. Behind the wheel, we've kept the original old school 60 series dashboard layout and we've replaced the single din analog radio with an Alpine Halo 9. Now this is a nine inch screen that replaces the single DIN unit and I think it looks absolutely trick. And because none of us are smokers, we've replaced the ashtray with the Lynx display unit. Now Lynx is gonna give us all sorts of things in this vehicle. We'll be able to control the airbags as we drive. We'll be able to turn lockers on and off. We can switch all the lighting on and off of the outside of the vehicle. Now if you watched the episode of the Pull Apart, you would have noticed that the door trims were literally disintegrating. Australian door cards make door cards for a variety of both old and new vehicles. One of the things I do like about it is it does carry a, an industrial look about it, but it's completely waterproof. Now the original interior of this vehicle had vinyl and it had a whole lot of swamp water. It had a whole lot of all sorts of stuff. In taking all this out, there's no way we're going to salvage it. So we've replaced it with carpet. Anyone that's been in an older style Forby would be able to relate to this experience. When you're sitting in the passenger seat or the driver's seat trying to have a conversation and no one can hear each other. So we got onto car builders to provide us the, with the best solution to keep all those rattles and outside noises outside. So while the guys were installing things at ARB, Luke from OTF, he rolled it all in, it was all done in no time. We absolutely love the centre console in the Mighty 79. So we contacted the guys from the Department of the Interior and would you believe it, they still make centre consoles and roof consoles for all these old vehicles. The styling of the roof console, I think it still has that old school feel with the map lights, but it's brought the vehicle into a more modern age. In the back of the Sandy 60 behind the two barn doors is an outback drawer system. There's a full height drawer on the driver's side and a low drawer for easy access to the fridge. Now the fridge we've gone for is the new 044 letter. I'm pretty sure that they designed this on the basis that it suits a Sandy Talk vehicle. Look at the colour scheme, it's awesome. Now the guys at ARB Wangara have custom built a set of wing panels to suit this drawer system so that it, the whole deck finishes flush with the side of the cabin. In that side compartment next to the drawers, we've got the ARB dual compressor and the tank, all hard mounted. This air operating system is all controlled from links and next to the driver. Hard mounted in front of the drawers is everything to do with electrical. There's circuit breakers, fuses, the battery management system, the Lynx controller unit that does just about everything. Now with the camera truck, we're charging up all sorts of massive batteries for lighting, cameras, drones, and the works. Plus, we run a coffee machine. Uh, in the Sandy 60, we need enough power to run the fridge, charge people's phones, charge people's camera batteries and the like. 
A 700 watt inverter and 100 amp hour lithium will be heaps of power to do the job. So what are we going to do about coffee, you might ask? Well, years ago we used to run a thing called the Bialetti. It's a Bialetti cafeteria, stovetop device with a gas burner and all the rest and a hand grinder for the coffee beans. It was all in a pelly case. We were bringing that back into uh, play. It actually looks like a brand new car. So join us on this adventure and follow the post of the Sandy 60 as we fix up this old bus and tackle some amazing tracks on an epic adventure across Australia. Thank <music> you.